immunodeficiency is when your immune system has been compromised or faulty. That basically means that your ability to fight an infection is reduced or is absent. There can be two types of immunodeficiency depending on what caused the deficiency, so primary or, or secondary immunodeficiencies. Uh, primary immunodeficiencies result from uh, genetic disorders, so they are hereditary, while the secondary immunodeficiencies are due to other causes, for example, after an infection or due to malignancy or if you have been taking immunosuppressive treatments. There are over 300 conditions recognized by the WHO under the umbrella term primary immunodeficiencies. They are classified according to the predominant mechanism that is defective. So you have four main groups that are antibody disorders, T-cell deficiency, phagocytic disorders and complement disorders. And altogether, these are about three quarters of all the primary immunodeficiency. So you might have heard of lupus or the hereditary angioma, and these are two examples of well-known immune deficiencies. There is an estimate 6 million people living with PID worldwide. That's one person in 1,200, which of course is significant, but between 70 and 90% are undiagnosed. The majority of the patients are actually diagnosed for the first time when they reach adulthood and only 30% are diagnosed before the age of 15. Immunodeficiencies are often diagnosed after too many infections, so they should be considered when a patient has severe, persistent, recurrent and unusual infection or spur for short. Once there is a suspicion of PID, the actual diagnosis requires multiple laboratory tests. First, a full blood count. This initial test allows the clinician to know if you have the right amount of cells in your blood. The second test would be immunoglobulins, also known as antibodies. And as I said, antibody defects are really common, over 50%. So checking these first really helps to assess the patients.